it's actually, it's a really cheap metal. It's uh, been broken in half twice and been soldered together. But I got it from a Tibetan refugee in Nepal on the top of this mountain. You know, it just stands for love and compassion and, um, you know, it just keeps me mindful. Fortunately, I don't wear it during CrossFit workouts, so. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure it would break in half, you know, the first thrust I do, so. But it means a lot, you know, that's why back together twice. My name's Eric Bach and I'm 27 years old. I started doing CrossFit while I was in college at Florida State University in Tallahassee. Uh, that was in 2006 when I when I found CrossFit and uh, in this tiny climbing gym in Tallahassee they had this back room and all the weights were donated. They kind of felt bad for us. They'd see us doing all these crazy things back there and they would uh, donate weights to us. Basically, the expedition was 13 teams of three, so 39 people um, in an epic adventure, uh, Indiana style, Indiana Jones style race across Morocco. You're crossing the Sahara Desert. You're riding camels. You're uh, taming Arabian stallions. You know, you're having all these puzzles thrown at you in the process. Repelling 300 foot cliffs. Um, you know, very physically demanding and uh, mentally challenging process. And uh, it's a team of three, so you gotta keep it together. You know, it's an interesting dynamic. Well, on the team, it's myself, uh, John Post, who I knew from college. We were in a fraternity and uh, he was my little brother. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that's how that works out. And then uh, Taylor, um, actually we met in San Diego. We just formed the team, you know, Taylor made a great video. Being a producer, he already had all the equipment and um, sent it in and next thing we knew we were in Morocco. So that's how you get on the show? You make a video about yourselves? Or yeah, we actually got on the show. We really had no desire to be on reality television. Um, I, I didn't even have cable at the time. You know, I barely watched any TV. And, um, you know, we, I had a, actually, I was bartending. I was pretty broke. I had just got done traveling for like three years. But then when I looked into it and actually talked to the casting director, I was like, wow, this epic expedition through Morocco, everything's paid for. You know, it's just like everything we've been training for our entire lives. Went to uh, finals in LA for like four days where we went through physical testing, mental testing. Um, you know, I had to fill out like a thousand page uh, survey um, to make sure we weren't crazy or, or too crazy. I'm sure a few people slipped through the cracks on that one though. <laughs> you know, we weren't really sure where we stood with the competition. I mean, we had we were competing against ex-NFL football players, you know, guys that had led trips on Everest and all, all across the world. Um, and, you know, a, a ton of other teams that have done, you know, amazing things with their lives and were obviously really physically fit. Um, so we weren't really sure how, how we were going to do, you know, from the start. This is, this is stupidity here, but I mean, wh whatever doesn't kill you makes you feel more alive, kind of. So I've always kind of pushed the boundaries, um, you know, with adventure, with travel, with working out, um, whatever it may be. And so this was just kind of another, another way to push myself, um, you know, with my best friends all across Morocco. You can't, can't beat that. That's why I love CrossFit, you know, it's, um, it's a way that, you know, I've, I've tested myself since 2006 and, um, you know, continually do, and it's, uh, it, it was, you know, hand in hand with, with our travels through Morocco, for sure. On, before the show, CrossFit was our main form of training, really. Um, myself, uh, I'd, I'd been doing CrossFit at, at Invictus, CrossFit Invictus in San Diego for um, about a year and a half prior to the show. Um, my buddy John had uh, been doing CrossFit as well, and then we introduced uh, Taylor, who's my third teammate, um, to CrossFit. And um, yeah, we just really, really ramped it up, ramped up our training at Invictus. Focusing a little bit more on endurance rather than strength training. Um, so doing longer workouts, higher reps. Um, and then in addition to that, you know, we, we would really train seven days a week. On the weekends, we would take off, uh, you know, we'd go to Joshua Tree and hike and do navigation and do map reading. And um, we were training with uh, other Navy SEALs that I actually met through CrossFit at Invictus um, that were, you know, help, helping us with, uh, you know, learning topography and learning how to use a compass and, you know, really all the basics that we had no idea how to do. We'd do, we'd do CrossFit style night hikes, so we'd be, um, you know, we'd have packs on, we'd load them up with weight, um, 
we'd pick a mountain, we'd go out to it, and we'd really time ourselves and just race up this mountain in the middle of darkness with, with headlamps and, um, and test ourselves. We took it pretty seriously. Well, the testing in LA, the physical testing, I, I think <laughs> they just wanted to make sure you could stay afloat in a pool. It really didn't compare. Um, you had to tread water for I think a minute or two minutes and then swim a few laps. Uh, it, was, it wasn't too intense. You know, out of the 13 teams, there definitely were people that had heard of CrossFit. We were in a hotel uh, in Morocco before we took off on our, on our expedition for training. And I remember watching the football players kind of like spying on them outside the window. And they were, they were definitely doing a CrossFit style workout. Um, so that had me intimidated. I was like, I remember looking at each other. And we were like, oh no, the football players know CrossFit. That's our secret weapon. Your team was named the Gypsies, right? Yeah, we're the Gypsies. <laughs> and this is part of your get up? Yeah, this is the get up. I mean, not the skinny jeans and dress shoes, but uh, it's purple. This is actually from, from the show. I wore it almost every day. Did they give it to you or? They did, they decided our color, you know. We weren't the biggest fans of purple at first, but it kind of grew on us. How did they choose gypsies for your team, you think? Um, actually, when we um, applied for the show, we kind of called ourselves the modern day gypsies. Mm -hmm. um, just because, you know, we're, uh, I don't know, we're not your average gypsies that are in caravans and, um, <laughs> you know, boxing and neighborhood fights. I guess just from just from our travels and just our lifestyle and you know going from one place for a little while then switching to the next place, just constantly moving. Um, we kind of just live that nomadic gypsy lifestyle. So on one of the teams there was a blind person. Yeah. Um, so on team no limits, um, there's a blind man, his name's Eric and uh, yeah he was he went blind when he was 13 and um, started climbing, started rock climbing. He's insane. He's such he was such an inspiration to our entire team. I mean, um, his biggest accomplishment, um, you know, climbing Everest, the only blind guy to have ever climbed Everest. Um, and Jeff, who was also on the team, w w led him up Everest the entire time. And um, and then Ike, uh, the third teammate, is a really highly decorated uh, veteran. The coolest thing was uh, that you know we got to see it on the show. We got to see Jeff leading Eric, and Jeff would, would hold a bell in his hand so Eric knew where he was. Um, and sometimes Eric would be holding on to him, and he would constantly be like, you know, um, don't don't look, don't don't step left, don't step left, hundred foot left, you know, jump three feet to your right, run, 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 and then he'd constantly um, have he'd have to just be vocal the entire time through this expedition. And we went through some gnarly areas. Um, so it was just it was so inspiring to, to see that and, and see that, uh, that communication and that camaraderie. You know, this was a huge opportunity with my best friends, um, not to just prove to myself, but to prove to the world that we could win this competition. Um, and CrossFit was just a major part of that. You know, I mean, that's, 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 that was our main focus completely um, for, for training. You wanted to win. Yeah, we. We wanted to win, um, you know. Just, just, you know, mentally, even with CrossFit, you know, that's how I am. You know, when I when I see someone next to me, um, you know, it, as as with everyone, you just get that extra boost. And going in going into the competition, I, I wanted to win. I think the most dangerous thing was the animals. I mean, that's just something we, we did. We did a little bit of training with that, with, you know, riding horses. But I mean. It's just something you can't prepare for. I mean, Arabian stallions, like how, how are you supposed to prepare for that? You know, I, was, I wasn't doing that in my CrossFit workouts. Um, and we, you know, then there's the camels as well. And you think, oh, camels just cruising. Um, but there's, I've learned there's like different levels of camels. <laughs> there's the cruisers and then there's some medium sized ones. And then there's like some huge mutant uh, dinosaur camels. I don't, I don't know what they're called but they run faster than a horse and they're super dangerous and you're bouncing up and down the whole time. And I just felt, I was like, man, like sometimes we're in these huge groups. It's like, if I fall off, I'm gonna get trampled and I'm gonna die. Um, and so that was, that was just weird, not having control. Not having control, the animal has complete control. Of um, learned about my spiritual side. I wasn't sure if I had it before, but uh, you know, after 
after a few experiences like that, I definitely um, developed it. For sure. I think my spiritual side comes out in CrossFit workouts um, when I think of being compassionate. And I think that's what's great about CrossFit. There's this level of compassion and camaraderie. Um, and it's a very spiritual thing, you know, when everyone's cheering each other on and, um, you know, pushing each other. And, um, you know, everyone's got your best interests in mind, and that's what compassion's all about. Yeah, exactly. It's um, being com completely selfless. You know, someone gets done with the workout and just run up and give them a hug and um, do whatever you can to help them out. Just that, that, uh, that selflessness about CrossFit is very inspiring to me. It's weird because there's like that whole competitive aspect of things and then there's that whole, you know, just being selfless and being compassionate side of CrossFit as well, you know, and it's just such a cool way to blend it. And, uh, I think that's what I really like about it. So you, you don't have to be either or. Totally. I mean, no one, it, in CrossFit, I mean, it's, there's such a strong sense of community. It's not. Even though you're competing, it's not cutthroat competition. You can still have that element of compassion and selflessness and you know, helping each other out. And um, that's what it's all about, man. It's all about having fun and rooting each other on, even if it's your strongest competitor in the games right next to you. Um, definitely. I think this trip uh, brought out the best in people. Um, obviously, it brought out the worst in people as well. Overall, I was... I was so impressed with the way people handled themselves, just the willingness to, to help. I mean, I, I, I wasn't expecting that, you know, especially from these people from all, all types of backgrounds. It was a huge element of compassion. So you think in CrossFit too, that's why compassion comes out, because you're suffering together? Yeah. And there's your push to your limits? Yep, definitely. Through suffering uh, comes compassion. So basically, you know, from, from the show, um, we wanted to take whatever momentum or whatever popularity we had, and instead of becoming D-list actors, we wanted to, you know, channel it in a positive way. Um, so we've come up um, with this concept behind the modern gypsy, um, and we started a website, and really what we're trying to do is inspire the compassionate adventurer and all people. Um, so you can go to this website, um, you can find out about us, but you can also um, go to the project section and you can actually vote between these different projects that we're going to be doing. We've teamed up with Free the Children um, and it's a project that combines adventure, uh, random acts of kindness, as well as one large project at the end. So whether that's building a well uh, in Kenya or um, going to Haiti and helping rebuild or going to Ecuador and building a school. Um, it's these really, really cool things that are going on and there's a huge element of adventure as well. So, you know, go on our website. It's uh, the Modern Gypsy, uh, moderngypsies.com. Uh, it's going to be up by the first episode on June 23rd and vote on the projects. You know, pick our next, next adventure and um, you can also contribute to the cause as well.